Israel, United in Christ. We're here to teach so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that true nationality according to the Bible. We're here at the I'll Make Me a World in Iowa, the 22nd anniversary of this event. We're here to bring repentance to the 12 tribes of Israel. This is what belongs to the Israelites, right? To whom pertaineth the adoption. To so be adopted back into the fold, you have to be in the Israelites. Keep going. And the glory. The glory, meaning the kingdom of heaven is for the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And the covenants. And the what? And the covenants. And the covenants, meaning the old covenant and the new covenant is only for the Israelites. Keep going. And the giving of the law. And the giving of the law. The law is only given to Israel. Right. So like you said, you said you could be an Israelite spiritually too, right? Read verse 1. Verse 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. Read. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost. Read. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Read. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ, from my brethren. From my what? My brethren. He said, from my brethren. Keep going. For my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. My kinsmen, according to the flesh. Read. Who are Israelites. So this is why it's important to know that you're the Israelites. Because to be adopted back in, the promises and the glory, which is the kingdom of heaven, was only given to the 12 tribes of Israel when you read the New Testament. Like, I feel like if I was... So this is why you. But listen though, because you said you said to be adopted back in. This is why you have to be adopted back in because you lost your way. You haven't been following the commandments. But I never had the way. This is what grace is for, like you said. Grace. This is what grace. Grace is for the twelve tribes of Israel. This is your great period now to get yourself together, sis. This is for the nation, brother Abraham, when you come back to Genesis 15. Twelve ten. Christ who pretended the adoption, the glory, the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God and the promises, whose are the fathers, whose are the fathers, and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came. Who's concerning the flesh, the twelve tribes of Israel? That was the purpose of Christ coming back, was to save Israel. Verse 7. Neither neither because they are the seed of Abraham. So neither because they come from Abraham. Because guess what? It says Abraham was the father of many nations, not all nations. It says, neither because they come from the seed of Abraham, read. Oh, they are children. But in Isaac. It says, because they are the seed of Abraham, that don't make them God's children. But keep going. But in Isaac. But in Isaac, read. Show thy seed be called. In Isaac, the seed was called. The promises was given from Abraham, Isaac, to Jacob. Got, you got more? That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. The children of the flesh are not the children of God. The children of the promise. Keep going. But the children of the promise. Are counted for the seed. He said the children of the I promise is counted. But listen, I, I know, I know, I'm gonna let you go. I, I know, I know what you're doing. Sure. 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 Romans was written to the Jews. Sure. Sure. Yes, the book of Romans was written to the Jews. Yeah, the Hebrews are too, but the book of Romans, these were Israelites that were scattered in Rome. 
Not be ashamed. He said the Israelites shall not be ashamed. Nor confounded. Uh -huh. World without end. When did he call Israel? World without end. He called Israel a world without end. So when you read John 3 16 and it said God so loved the world, it's talking about the world of Israel. It's not talking about everybody. Well, I think we're going to agree to disagree, but I think we're understanding. I mean, it's, it's, this is helpful. But sister, the most important thing is keeping the commandments. You need to keep the commandments. You need to, because remember, when you read Deuteronomy 22 and 5, women aren't supposed to be born in The most important thing that we teach is keeping God's commandments. You got to keep the commandments. Stop cooking on the Sabbath. If Christ cracked the sky and came back today, you just cooked on the Sabbath last night, you're going to get put in the Sabbath. So you have to stop cooking. You got to get, you got to take advantage of your grace. We are in the scriptures because I know we are. So oh, this is what I, I want you to do. So I will, I will yeah, call us. I, if you got any questions, okay. reach out to us, okay? I appreciate, I appreciate you. you. For, now I'm at four. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant, even unto them will I give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than the sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Even unto them. Uh, I'm going. And, say, and so now we're going back to the stranger. So we're saying even unto them. So now let's move to the stranger, the Gentile, right? Yep. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord. And we know his name is Yah, hallelujah. To be his servant, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant, even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. For oh, all? Oh, wait, 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 oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Let me finish. For all people. All people. That keep, obviously, the law, statutes, and commandments. All people. That keep those Sabbath days. That yep. keep them holy. That don't go into pagan holy day, uh, uh, holidays. That keep those holy days. Uh, that for all people, uh, there's a place from the, from the eunuch even to the stranger, the Gentile. There's a place in his house. Can I say something like that? Of course you can. So now, I, I want you to open your Bible back. I'll let you know. You got what's it. Up. Help me out. No, I want you to help me out, brother. You got to keep reading, I, brother. I brought it up. Help Come me on. Read. No, keep reading. Come on, keep brother. Keep reading, brother. I'll let you read your whole chapter. I'm right in where I want to be. So, I'm, come on. I'm good. Right where I'm at. I'll read the next verse for you. Go and then you're going to take over, right? Read the next verse. Yeah, just read the next verse. And then you're going to take over, right? I just want you to read the next verse. I can do that, brother. Because this is what I like to do. I can read that, brother. I like to read everything in concept. Yes, sir. So read verse 8. The Lord God which gathered the outcasts of Israel said, yet, yet will I gather others to him beside those that are gathered unto him. So who was the whole chapter talking about? The listening. whole chapter of Isaiah 56 was talking about the outcasts of Israel. That's the whole context of the chapter. It's not talking about people from another nation. We're talking about Israelites. Go to Isaiah 11 11. Let's see who the outcast is, Israel is at. Isaiah 11 11. Read that the Bible. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, uh -huh. which shall be left from Assyria. So you had Israelites that was in Assyria, that was keeping pagan customs, keep going, 
and from Egypt. You had Israelites in Egypt that was keeping baby vessels. Keep going. And from Pathros. You had Israelites in Pathros that was keeping baby vessels. Keep going. And from Cush. And from Cush in Africa. Keep going. And from Elam. And from Elam. Keep going. And from Shinar. And from Shinar. Keep going. And from Hamath. Keep going. And from the islands of the sea. So guess what? Israelites are scattered everywhere. Isaiah I got it highlighted. It's I talking highlight. about these Israelites. That's what Isaiah 56 is talking about. Why did he? He's not talking about all nations. Why did he utilize other nations to bless Israel? So hold on, we, we still dealing with Isaiah 56. I'm moving on. I'm no, no, we're not moving on. Out. We're not moving on. We're not moving on. Because we got to deal with your statement you made. I'm that making another statement. Psalm 78 verse 5. Because you said the other nations can keep the laws. So let's see what's the laws given to all nations. Psalms, give me that. Psalm 78 verse 5. You already know that's Psalm, accurate. Chapter, Psalm chapter 78 verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob uh -huh. and appointed a law in Israel. He only gave the 12 tribes of Israel his laws. He didn't give his laws to no uh, other nation on the word. So that's why we know Isaiah 56, when it talks about the Sabbath, he's not talking about no other nation. He's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 15. So remember in Isaiah 56 and 7, it says, Even them will I bring to my holy mountain, and I will make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. So this is going to show that it's not talking about the other nations, period. Let's see what he said about the other nations. Period. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. So this is Isaiah, 10 chapters, 15, 16 chapters before what we just read. He says all the nations are as a drop of a bucket, go ahead. And count it as a small dust of the balance. He said all the nations are like a small piece of dust that's on the balance beam, go ahead. Behold, he taken up the isles as a very little thing. Uh -huh. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn. He said Lebanon is not sufficient to be burnt, really. Nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. The nations can't give an offering to God in Isaiah 4. So that shows you what you read in Isaiah 56 is a contradiction of the Bible. Because Isaiah 40, he said another nation can't bring a sacrifice to him. But you're trying to use Isaiah 56 out of context, it's saying it's talking about the other nations, and it's not talking about the other nations, period. So your understanding of Isaiah 56 is contradicting the Bible. So the other nations, they don't matter at all. I never said the other nations don't matter. Yeah, the other yeah, nations is going to be in the King of Heaven, yes. They're going to be there. Where, where's it saying how they're going to be? Isaiah 14. Same precept. Go ahead. Isaiah 14. I didn't, I didn't bring up 14. No, no. I'm saying in the same book that you brought Isaiah 56. So read Isaiah 14 and 1. You saw that first one. Every nation is going to be in the King of Heaven. I agree. Every nation. But you got to realize. Remember what you read in how many cases in the King of Heaven, first of all. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure if you know or not. Gates, uh, seven, uh, twelve. Twelve gates for the I twelve tribes of Israel. There you go. When you read Revelation chapter 21. Go ahead and read Isaiah 56. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land. So the Israelites is going to be set in their own land in the last days. Keep going. And the strangers. And the strangers. Who the strangers Because there's two sets of strangers when you read in the Bible. You have the strangers of the Israelites. Because it was the Israelites that was considered strangers because they was keeping pagan, pagan on pagan rituals. They wasn't keeping the ways of the laws. They was called strangers too, and we could prove that too. But in this context, the strangers are the other nations. We have Israelites that were Israelites that were, uh, that were uh, sliding in and out of the, of the laws themselves. That's why they keep on having to sacrifice. I'm not disagreeing uh, with you on that. So that means that I guess that we all, we all should be strangers. I'm not strangers. but this strangers that it's talking about is the other nations. That's what it's talking about. Read it again from verse 1. Verse, Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob uh -huh. and will yet choose Israel uh -huh. and set them in their own land. He's going to put the 12 tribes of Israel in their own land. Keep going. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And the other nations, like you worried about, they're going to be joined with us in the kingdom of heaven. But keep going. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And they're going to cleave to the house of Jacob. Keep going. And the people shall take them and bring them to, to, to their place. Uh -huh. And the house of Israel. And the house of Israel is going to what? Shall possess them. We're going to possess the other nations. They're going to be 
the kingdom of heaven with us. But just like in this kingdom of heaven, there's one ruling class of people, which will be the so-called white man, and everybody else is under. In the kingdom of heaven, the Israelites is going to be ruling, and all the other nations is going to be below the Israelites. I keep going. going. For servants and handmaids. So the nation's going to be servants and handmaids. Go ahead. And they shall take them captives. So I said the curses is going to be on the Israelites for signing the one to read. And upon thy children. But all the be, it's going to be on the Israelites and that ever these certain curses. So let's see who gets this place. It ain't as easy as I can do whatever that I want. If you don't, you do my commandments. All 613. Exactly. If you, if, if those 613 apply to you. Exactly. Because there are different commandments that do not apply to everyone. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. So now, but remember the Jews, they always kept breaking the commandments. Oh, yeah. All the time. Oh, yeah. All the time. It's going to identify who the Israelites are. Turn to the first 48. Verse 48, therefore, shall not serve my enemies. So it's saying, a certain group of people have to serve their enemies. Which the Lord thy God, which the Lord shall send against you. So God sent these enemies against the Jews for breaking this commandment. And hungry, a certain nationality of people have to go to another nationality of people. Because God said they have to serve their enemies and hungry. When you look at the so called African American we don't want to stores, we don't have anything in the back. We have to go to the field that brought us in the shape. And in thirst. And in thirst. Because water, I could feel the design he flipped Michigan. We didn't have no control over the water situation. We keep going. And in nakedness. And in nakedness, the clothes that's on our backs, we don't import or export the clothing. The raw textiles keep going. And in want of all things. And in want of all things, we have to go to our enemies. But it's going to specify, specify who is talking about you. And he. Put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. And this is Bible prophecy that came to pass. It says, the people that persecute you, they could put yokes of iron upon thy neck, Shri. Until they have destroyed you. And see, when they took the yokes of iron off our necks, we start, we was destroyed mentally. We was calling ourselves African Americans. We start, um, just like the music that you hear us make. It's because we in a destroyed mindset because we don't know who we are. That's why we um, gravitate to Islam because we always searching for a sense of um, community within community. Exactly. where you were. Exactly, oh, exactly. That's why we gravitate to those other Totally understood. Exactly. But we finding out in the last days that we are the Israelites according to the Bible. The reason why you see all this bad stuff that happens in the black community is because we turn against our God and we go all the way. You guys are not African Americans. You guys are Israelites. You guys go to school, right? Give me the Army 28, 18. Now, uh, what we're going to do? Seven grade? So you are all seven grade? Okay. So have you guys learned yet about any history in school? Some history. Have you guys learned about black history? No black history yet? Okay, I'm going to show you some black history in the Holy Bible. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass. So God says, this is going to happen in the last days. Okay? If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Hearken means to listen. If you don't listen to the voice of God, meaning if you don't keep his commandments, if you're disobedient, like when you have a parent that tells you to do something and you don't do it, you're being disobedient, right? So God says, listen, you Israelites, if you be disobedient to my word, to my commandments, go ahead. To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, yes. that all these curses, wait, all these what? All these curses. All these curses. You know, curses are good or a bad thing? Bad thing, right? So he said, listen, you Israelites, you so-called blacks and Hispanics, if you don't keep God's commandments, I'm going to place curses upon you. Bad things upon you, right? Watch this. You want to come upon you? And I'm going to read about the curse. The curse that we have to the city. So the first curse was that the blacks and Hispanics now, I want you to think about the inner cities in America, right? Who predominant, who mainly lives in the ghettos? Our people, right? Who got shot down in the streets in an innumerable rate? Our people, right? Who has the highest rates of prostitution, gang banging, drug dealing, all those things in the city? It's our people, right? So God says, listen, if you didn't keep my commandments, you would be cursed in the city. Now watch this. Cursed shall that be in the field. Cursed shall that be in the field. Now, if you look at this picture here, uh, you can't really see it on here. Hey, uh, can you give me that picture? Oh, they got the picture. They got the picture. It's all good. When you think about when you think about slavery, right? What was our brothers and sisters doing in slavery? They were taking the eye. They were working for the right? 
Now, in 1619, you're going to learn about these later on in time. In 1619, we had a time that was called the transatlantic slave trade. That's when they got a whole bunch of people from the west coast of Africa, while in North America. We were uh, uh, living in horrible conditions because we decided not to keep God's commandments. You see what I'm saying? So we said, listen, because you're disobedient to my laws, I'm going to have people take you from the west coast of Africa and bring you to this side of the world to be as slaves. Because just like when you have a uh, uh, son or a daughter and you do something bad, what usually happens? You get grounded, right? you might get hit, whatever the case may be, right? We are God's children. We are God's children. So how does he deal with us? He deals with us as children. We didn't do what he says, so he punishes us as a nation of people. See what I'm saying? So because of our disobedience, we are going to be put on slave ships. We are going to be pushing the sea. We are going to be pushing the sea. All those different things. You see what I'm saying? So what I want to show you guys is that we are the people of this book. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay? We make up the Israelites. Okay? Christ is a black man of blood. And guess what? The blood that was running through his veins is the same blood you guys got in your life. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 46. And they, and they shall be upon thee for a sign. So the person will be upon us for a sign. What does a sign do? It identifies something, right? You can look at a sign, oh, McDonald's, I know that's McDonald's. So all these curses here are for a sign for us to know who we are. Okay? Because in slavery, we forgot who we were. We forgot that we were the Israelites. God shows the people. You see what I'm saying? So give me uh, an act of so I want to show you what our mission is. Our mission, first off, is to show you your true nationality. That you are God's greatest creation. All right? Our second uh, thing that we want to teach our people is to repent, to come back to God's commandments. All right? Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. So God lets us know that, guess what? Knowing who we are, learning that Christ is a black man, and now we have to repent. We need to return back to God's commandments. We got to return back to what he says to you. Okay, we don't. That your sins may be blotted out when the time of repression shall come from the so God lets us know that guess what? We have to repent. We have to come back to the We teach us that the blacks, Hispanics, and Americans are the Israelites. How we know that we're the Israelites is by the curses of Deuteronomy 28. We like to start by telling our people, um, we'll ask them questions based on the history that we all know. Okay, so in the sense of you know, how did we come to America? You know, we came to America, what took place? Um, during, uh, you know, from 18, I'm sorry, 1619 to 1863, what were we doing? You know, we try to get all these facts laid out first and foremost, and then we go into where the Bible actually said that these things would take place against the Israelites if we broke the laws, okay? So, so now, if I was to ask any of those questions to you, namely, um, the method of transportation that we were, that was used to carry us across the yeah, transit line, Transportation. I would say we were on a boat called Jesus. Okay. So, what you see here, there's a boat, right? And this is the packing method that they used. There was something called light packing, and it was loose packing and tight packing. Tight packing, you could get more slaves in a more condensed area, and they would do this, but what would happen is you'd have a heightened case of uh, sicknesses and disease amongst the slaves, all right? And the loose packing was where they would space them out. And when they spaced them out, you had more of a chance that the slaves would live, your cargo would live, or what you were trying to um, sell. You know, it was, it, they had a better chance of surviving. So they would utilize these methods to transport us across the slave, uh, or, I'm sorry, across the Atlantic Ocean, right? But in the scriptures, it actually says, you get Deuteronomy 28 and 15 right there. Deuteronomy 28 verse 15 but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God so just to speed you up and to get you um, into the context of this is Moses had just ex escorted the Israelites out of Egypt the Pharaoh had them in, in uh, bondage and he was telling them that these are the terms and conditions of the Israelites being blessed or being cursed right now we're reading the curses all right to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day so the terms and conditions was do God's laws and commandments right that all these curses should come upon thee and overtake thee. But if we didn't do God's commandments, curses would come upon us and overtake us. Now, we both agree that the, the method of transit across the Atlantic Ocean was a boat. Go to verse 68. Verse 68. Okay. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So he said, I'm going to bring you into Egypt again. Now, when the people hear that word Egypt, it kind of throws them off. Because Moses had just escorted the Israelites out of Egypt. So the people were like, well, wait a minute, what does this mean? So now we're going to get the meaning of what Egypt means in the Bible. This is Deuteronomy 5, verse 6. I am the Lord thy God, 
which brought thee out of the land of Egypt okay. from the house of bondage. So it's just from the house of bondage, all right? So whenever the Israelites heard Egypt, they automatically thought about bondage, all right? Because those two things, they were synonymous, or they were just um, close ties with one another, all right? So now when we go back to 2868, it'll make more sense. Deuteronomy 2868. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So bondage again, or slavery again, how? With ships. With <coughs> ships. So now, again, what we said was, so-called blacks. They came over here on the side of the world with these ships. These are actual images taken from movies, taken from events that happened in the past when they drew what they saw, all right? So we can agree on that. But are we reading about African-Americans? Who are we reading about in the Bible? You know what God's people are? I would say God's people in the Bible are us. Yes. Are, so, are the black men and the black women that are here in the host of the Do you know what Moses' uh, nationality was? I would say he was a black man. Okay, but like, like but in terms of Hebrew? Well, Israelite. Israelite. Most of us okay. are Israelite. Read that. Yeah. yeah. Just for the moment. Exodus chapter 1, verse 1. Right. Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob. Reuben, Simeon, Levi. Hold on, hold on. Reuben? So, read it again before you start. Let's start again. Reuben, Simeon, Levi. So, Reuben. These are the Seminole Indians. You got a Reuben. You want to hold this for me? Come over here. So Reuben, what it said? Reuben, Simeon. Simeon. Those Levi. Those are the Dominicans, and Levi are the Haitians. All right, so this is showing that we all come from one father, mm -hmm. Jacob, in the scriptures. Go ahead. And Judah. And Judah. This is us right here. Judah is the American blacks. So now, our nationality is called Judah in the scriptures. All right, go ahead. Issachar. Issachar, that's the so-called Mexicans or the Aztecs of old. Those are our brothers as well. This is information that's been hidden from us because, again, we've been divided through language. We have language barriers. We have religious barriers. They uh, put us in different locations. All these were tools to divide and conquer a people. All these people was made up of 12 tribes of Israel. All right, keep reading. Zebulon. Zebulon. That's our, that's our brothers of Guatemala and Panama, the Mayans, what they were from old times. But and Benjamin. And Benjamin. Those are your West Indies or your Jamaicans. All right, so we all are one people. Go ahead. Dan and Naphtali. Dan and Naphtali. So Naphtali is here from Argentina to Chile. All right. And Dan was absorbed into Benjamin when the conquistadors came and conquered the side of the world. All right. So let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. So what we're showing is how the scriptures uh, correlate to our history and it shows that we aren't actually African American or black. We actually are the Israelites. That's if you believe in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? If you follow what the scriptures say, then this this is this is full this is foolproof. You know, this can't be disproven. You know, was there ever a people that um, were taken into, into the slavery that we were taken into? Does does it, uh, in history was there ever a people that um, what do you call that? A people that uh, had what happened to us take place with them as well? Or were we the only ones that this happened to? I would say we there? were in terms of I get what you're saying, like black or like african-american i think in modern terms we classify ourselves that way because white europeans have given us those titles but so for lack of better words so i don't think anybody has had the same level of bondage as the black man or black woman yeah. and so when you break down the different tribes those are our people too exactly. those are our brothers and sisters and th through the change of the atmosphere the climate and mm -hmm. culture you get the change of the colors of skin exactly. you get the changes of the dialect of language um, that they speak. So I agree with everything that you're saying. So, and I like what you said because you said um, we were all one people. So as you mm -hmm. see, these boats, all the places that they went to. Yeah, hold that up, bring that here. So this is the west coast of Africa where the majority of us were. Mm -hmm. Our brothers and sisters were already over here, the so-called Native Americans, the Mayans mm -hmm. and the Aztecs. They were already here. But they came and got us from the west coast of Africa. Can you give me Deuteronomy 2849? Mm -hmm. And then the boats, they took the majority of slaves, they wanted, I want to say 200 million, and that's a rough estimate of you know what they say of all the um, slaves that were transported, and a lot of us died in the transportation. So a lot of times they'll say, well, you know, that's the worst Holocaust. Um, they'll say the Holocaust was the worst event that happened in history, but they just exclude what happened to us as far as you know all the lives that were lost on this passage. They say that sharks would, would uh, inhabit these waters because they knew dead slaves would be thrown over, and that's where they got their food from. You see what I'm saying? So all this took place, and this is what happened to us. Just to back up the point of what happened and took place against us has never happened to any other people. Read verse 49. This is Deuteronomy 28, 49. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. So a nation came from far. Because our brothers and sisters over here, they didn't know nothing about no Spanish men. They didn't know about no conquistadors. They didn't know these things. So a nation came from far to this side of the world and conquered them and uh, placed upon them colonialism. All right? And that's what happened over here as well. 
west coast of Africa. A nation came from far, Europeans, the Portuguese, the Dutch, they came from far, they sailed the ocean blue, as they say with Christopher Columbus, and they came to the west side of the uh, west coast of Africa. Go ahead. From the end of the earth. From the end of the earth, because our brothers and sisters, they was like, well, they came from far away. You know what I'm saying? On a map, it looks close, but this is actually a long distance, all right? And then from here to here as well. Go ahead. As swift as the eagle flies. As swift as the eagle flies. So now, yes, on the back of the dollar bill, I got you. you'll you have a pyramid and you'll have an eagle. Why is there an eagle on the back of the dollar bill? Representing European culture. Exactly. So the European culture, yeah, we have actual dollar prices. Yeah, so the eagle was on there because this is a representation of the United States. This is the bird that they, they say is a, uh, symbolizes America, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, in times past, the same thing was true with Spain, with, uh, with Germany, Greek. with Russia, with Greece, all these different, Rome as well. All the, well, here, I'm sorry, you got it right here. The Greeks, they carry the eagle, the Romans as well, and USA. So showing that it's all the same empire, but with a different name. That's all that's taking place, all right? So the Lord said that he was gonna bring this nation from far, as swift as the eagle fly. Go ahead. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. They said we wouldn't understand their tongue. So was English our native our native language? No. It, it was not, right? So now, the, our brothers and sisters that were here, they got conquered by the Spanish. So what the Spanish did was they talked in Spanish. You see what I'm saying? They took away all their, um, their uh, native tongue or whatever they were, uh, their indigenous language was, which was Hebrew, okay? We have, do we have a flyer? What you need? Uh, give me the, the gad flyer. Yeah. yeah, this one right here, this one right here. Can you turn it around for me? So, this is what was found in the Americas. This language here, this is a language that was found. Now, them characters, that's, that's, that's something that we don't really have today. We have an alphabet today. But what the Native Americans understood and what they communicated with was this here. This is Paleo Hebrew, okay? But their people were conquered and they were taught uh, English by uh, the, what do you call them, the pilgrims. Mm -hmm. And those people, those different people that came and they went into boarding schools and the same thing happened to us on the plantations. <coughs> they said they beat the name Toby out of us and they said, no, oh, I'm sorry, no, not, it was uh, Kunta Kente. Right, right. They, boot, they beat Kunta Kente out of us and they said, yeah, now your name's Toby. And this is what happened to us. And that's how we were forced to take on a different culture. All right, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Verse 50, a nation of fierce countenance. They were fierce, meaning, in regards to showing compassion or, or uh, sympathy for a people, they didn't do that. Right. You know, when they when they saw our women, they said, y'all gonna pick the same amount of cotton as, as the man is. You gonna pick whatever load I tell you to pick. And the same thing was true for our children. The children had to pick their body weight in cotton. So our babies was out there three, four years old, you know, picking cotton, getting cut on those, uh, the plants. You know what I'm saying? All this was happening to us because they were a nation that, that had fierce countenance, go ahead. Which shall not regard the person of the old, uh -huh. nor show favor to the young. So they didn't regard our old men, meaning, you know, because normally it says, you know, in the, in the uh, Ten Commandments it says, honor thy father and thy mother. So you would think a Christian nation that came, they would, they would know to do this, but mm. they didn't care about that. The men that had knowledge, that had understanding, they made sure to kill them off so that now you had a fresh breed of slaves that you could influence and that you could uh, persuade and condition. And that's what's happened to us. And that's why we take on the name, last names that we have. That's why we um, That's why we go off into different religions. That's why we believe that Christ is a white man. Instead of believing that he looks like that, as the scriptures say, he had skin like yours, but as if it burned in a furnace. And that's why he's so dark. He had hair like wool like you have. Our hair, you know what I'm saying? All these things is what we've been taken away from and conditioned to accept a whole nother lifestyle and a whole nother society and say this is normal, but it's not. A nation of fierce countenance which shall not regard the person of the old nor show favor to the young. Right. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. So the labors that we put in in the field. We was in those fields from sun up to sun. I got a book, actually. This is a sister named Sarah Gudger, okay? She was interviewed in Asheville, North Carolina at the age of 121. She says, I was born about two miles from Old Fort on Old Morgantown Road. I sure, I sure has had a hard life. Just work and work and work. I never know nothing but work, okay? I'm gonna jump down. She says, I never know what it was to rest. I just work all the time from morning till late at night. I had to do everything they was told to do on the outside. Work in the field, chop wood, hold corn, till sometime I feel my back surely break. I done everything except split rails. You know, they split rails back in them days well. I'm sorry, in them days. Well, I never did uh, split no rails. So she's giving an account. It's an actual account of all the hard labor that our people went through. And it said that they would eat up everything that we did. So all the labor that um, took place during that time, that was that was tax-free money. You know what I'm saying? You didn't have to pay no employees. You didn't have to pay nobody. So that's why the term comes, I got old money. That's why they say that. 
that they got money from the times when we were in servitude, and all that is stored up for them. That's right. And you shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed. Which all but now, but this is just basically a brief synopsis of what it is that we go into as far as Israel United in Christ and what we teach. We try to show our people that everything that Moses said would take place prophetically has become black history. All right. So now we look back on these things and we say, well, you know, these things took place, but we don't understand that it correlates with the Bible. You know, and that it actually took place right here. But it describing us as being the Israelites, God's people. Okay. All right. So you got a flyer? Um, is this the full flyer? Yeah, this is just some information we can give you and leave you with. Um, we encourage you to research, you know, just look into it more. You may find that the things that we're saying is true, you know, and I want you to look at, um, you know, you see in Islam. Yep, and, I'm in the nation of Islam. Okay. So, no, everything that you're saying, I, I believe in. Okay, yeah, I and so. did a oh. great job of presenting and sharing the actual yeah. facts of, of your information. So, I think this is amazing. Yeah. I think that it's great to have you guys here today. Um, of course, being in Des Moines, Iowa, yeah. um, you don't hear or see too many men of color um, stand up and speak truth to falsehood in a predominantly like, white area. Right, right. So to have you guys here, I think that it's empowering. And I think once our young black men, they see you all and you're speaking truth and you're speaking it strong and you have your actual facts, just that wisdom, you know, it's great. So We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.